Hello everybody, good good morning, good evening, good day, wherever you are, and I hope you're having a good day. And welcome again to another video of mine, and today we're going to talk about Procreate Excel, so let's start. Here we go. Let's begin with the very basics of Pro Procreate Excel. As you see here in diagram, uh, Procreate Excel is a single cell organism that consists of from archaebacteria to bacteria, or from archaebacterium to bacterium as in singular. Of course, they are, they are smaller than a eukaryotic cells and have no nucleus and no organelles. However, they have gotten cell wall and or a layer of polysaccharide. One of the striking things about these cells is that they have appendages or project, projecting part, uh, as in many invertebrates that have, like flagellum, used for locomotion. It propels uh, the bacterium forward. And fimbria, which uh, is used for sticking to the surface. They also, the other, th other thing that is very, very different from eukaryotic cells is that their genetic material is very simple, circular, and are also called plasmids. So, this is a very basic prokaryotes, pro means before, and karyotes like cells, organisms. So, uh, these guys came billions of billions of years before. They were the first organisms uh, on Earth when Earth became livable. Not just oxygen concentration, but when Earth, even Earth cooled down about 4.5 billion years ago. So, um, evolution of prokaryotes. So let's focus on that. And this is a very beautiful picture of cyanobacterium. You can really see this DNA right here. Ribosomes, uh, carboxysomes, and um, many things. It's, it looks very simple. They have no nucleus. But, you know, they're, they're, they are also complex in their own rights. So um, this is the evolution is very interesting because uh, eukaryotic cells of today suggest that they have in fact evolved from prokaryotic cells. Prokaryotes are present everywhere. You name the place and they're there. From hot springs to volcanoes and even in the most frigid regions, they live very comfortably. For example, here in Russia, we have uh, the coldest place on Earth called Omiakon where the temperature goes as low as minus 72 degrees Celsius or about minus 160 degrees Fahrenheit. So that's really cold for us humans, but for these bacteria, it's not a problem. But the question remains, where and when did the cellular life on Earth start? It is suggested that prokaryotic cell appeared much before plants and animal cells, which is why it's called pro. In fact, billions of years before. Our Earth is, as I said, 4.5 billion years old, and evidence suggests that the Earth was an anxic, meaning that we didn't have oxygen before, and only anaerobic bacteria could survive, or anaerobic organisms could survive. Phototrops, these are plants that convert solar energy to chemical energy, came about 1 billion years later. And interestingly, cyanobacteria, uh, the cyanobacteria or bacterium is a it's a gram negative bacteria evolved from these phototrops because you see it's pretty greenish and plants are also green so well you know they convert solar energy to chemical energy in the process called photosynthesis however much much later when earth concentration i'm sorry when the oxygen concentration on earth increased this allowed the development of more oxygen efficient organisms and allowed for the evolution of life form. Before we go ahead, here's a quiz, quiz for you all. The question is, what is the name of the biggest part of the human brain? Is it A, the cerebellum? Is it B, cerebrum or brainstem? Please answer your question in the comment section and I'll give you the answer a little later at the end of the video. Once again, what is the name of the biggest part of the human brain? Is it A, the cerebellum, B, cerebrum or C, brainstem? Good luck. Right, so let's continue and let's see the cell structure of a prokaryote. Now let's focus on it, on the cell structure. As you see, the cell structure looks very simple, but it's complex as I said before. The outer layer has capsule, the green, the greenish thing you see is a capsule. And what is the function of this capsule? Well, to protect and give, and it helps bacteria, helps a bacterium to stick on the surface of the, stick on the substrate with the help of these fimbriae, as well as many other functions. The cell wall is another outer layer that protects and gives the shape to the, to the organisms. So what is the cell wall right here sandwiched between uh, capsule and cell membrane? 
The other structure is cytoplasm, and not unlike in eukaryotic cell, it contains water and organelles and enzymes needed for normal functioning of the cell, as well as other organic molecules. The cell membrane that surrounds the cytoplasm and its, and its function is to monitor the transpor transportation of substances. The pili or pilus is responsible for detachment and horizontal gene transfer during bacterial conjugation, whereas the fimbriae, these fimbriae or fimbria as in singular, are responsible for the attachment of the cell to its top substrate. I really like this beautiful diagram, beautiful, it looks very beautiful. Right, so let's see the reproduction in prokaryotes, how do they reproduce? Prokaryotes reproduce through a cell division called, uh, it's a process called uh, binary fission. And there are very different types of binary fissions, which we will look a little later. Um, like mitosis in eukaryotes, this process involves uh, copying the chromosome and separating one cell into two. The, the prokaryotic cell contains DNA that is tightly coiled prior to cellular splitting. The process starts by creating a replicate of the genetic material. Next, the chromosome segregates two separate poles of the cell called uh, it's a process called uh, karyokinesis. The cytoplasm is subsequently cleaved into two by a new cell member forming cytokinesis. A cell wall also forms if the original parent cells has one. The new cell wall often starts out as a Z-ring or the Z-ring as formed by the cytoskeleton. So uh, this is the pro um, let's have a now let's see the from proto eukaryotes evolution how did it, how did that happen very interesting and as mentioned before when the earth was formed we had only archaea bacteria capable of living in oxygenless environment and about I think one billion years later when the oxygen level on the earth increased they evolved and became aerobic and after about two billion years they eventually evolved into eukaryotes due to copious availability of oxygen. But the question is, how? Let's have a look. Bacterial DNA, as mentioned before, is simple and circular, uh, sometimes also called plasmid, whereas eukaryotic, eukaryotes have a complex and a linear DNA packed into nucleus. They have one pivotal organelle called mitochondrion or mitochondria, uh, also called the powerhouse of the cell. I'm sure you knew about that. This was the key to understanding how prokaryotic cell evolved into eukaryotic cells. Evidence suggests that uh, eukaryotic cells came from prokaryotic cell via endosymbiosis. So here is a diagram of endosymbiosis. You see the right, this purple, I'm sorry, purple bacterium and the green bacterium. So they are two independent bacteria. One bacterium engulfs the other, so the big one engulfs the small one. And on the third step, one bacteria now, one bacterium now lives inside the other. So they're like, okay, no problem. You can live inside. We can, we can live symbiotically, no problem. You benefit me, I benefit you. It's a win-win situation. And both bacteria benefits benefit from this arrangement. And then the internal bacteria are passed from one generation to another. So this is how you know, we evolved from bacteria. It has once, it were once, um, it has been proved that mitochondria have their own DNA in eukaryotic cells. The mitochondrion or chondria is related to bacteria that has eaten another cell and came together. So this is uh, the comparison appropriate Prokaryotes versus eukaryotes, a quick overview, so you can just pause the video and uh, quick look at the comparison. So, here it is. And now, uh, let's go to the quiz question. The right answer is cerebrum. Uh, cerebrum is the biggest part of the human brain, as you see right here in this diagram. This is, look at the cerebrum, it covers about 80% of the brain, or I think six, 75 to 80% of the brain. Uh, brain space rather and cerebellum uh, is right here and the brainstem which is also called uh, which has medulla oblongata and pons 
right here and the cerebrum is really huge so yeah the right answer is cerebrum okay so um thank you so much for your time if you've come all the way here i really appreciate your time and if you've got any questions about cell molecular biology please write to me or 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 you can comment and i'll be i'll ensure that i answer each and every comment of yours so thank you once again uh, i hope you're having a good day take care and i'll be back with another video very soon and very interesting video till that time take care stay safe be happy keep laughing and i'll see you later ta ta uh right paka paka namaste